is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2024 mitsubishi outlander courtesy of younger mitsubishi in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so today we are in this one because this is a very good looking suv i don't think anyone can argue that you took an america's best warranty as well being five years sixty thousand mile bumper to bumper 10 years 100,000 miles on the powertrain and if you actually were to drive to younger Mitsubishi here in Hagerstown Maryland they're actually going to double that powertrain warranty giving you a 20 year 200,000 mile powertrain warranty that's pretty nuts and that's available nationwide by the way so that's crazy but anyways this is a three row SUV this is the Mitsubishi's best selling vehicle as well so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2024 outlander you got the es starting at twenty eight thousand three hundred ninety five dollars which by the way is seven hundred twenty dollars cheaper than the 2023 model year for whatever reason you got the se for thirty one thousand four forty five black edition for thirty two six forty five and lastly the sel being the one we are in today starting at thirty four thousand nine hundred and forty five dollars by the way that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration if you wanted to add their four-wheel drive system which they call all-wheel control simply add $1,800 then to any of those prices and we'll get more into that system a little later in the video but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the Outlander is going to be the same powering the beast is a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four-cylinder putting out 181 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 181 pound-feet of torque coming in at 3,600 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a CVT with paddle shifters which you guys know we will of course be testing out here in a little bit but zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 8.2 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 24 in the city 31 on the highway for the front wheel drive 24 city 30 then on the highway for the four wheel drive system taking regular unleaded fuel but so that before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the outlander i do want to mention to you guys the drive modes so there's a circular dial located directly behind the shifter if you turn that to the left and to the right that's going to give you eco normal tarmac gravel snow mud as well with the all-wheel control system but i'll just mention here essentially with that all-wheel control system is it is a four-wheel drive system but it's a four-wheel drive system that was originally built for rally racing so racing in the dirt and the snow and bad conditions and things like that so this vehicle was essentially built to go through the worst terrains more or less but back to the drive modes they will adjust things like the uh, shift points the throttle response and the traction control settings there as well so now that we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the paddle shifters in acceleration here to the test let's see how quickly the paddle shifter is going to react for us and let's see how quickly we can get our new outlander here up to speed all right here's our straightaway in three two one go it's okay you shouldn't have any issues in merging onto the highway it's just okay not the very quickest suv in the world obviously but it's not horribly slow either it's just kind of average so honestly it'll get the job done i'll just put it that way it's not the crazy though but anyways let me now do a quick little paddle shifter test i just want to see how quickly they are going to react for us here and by the way there is a full manual shift mode to actually switch it to that full manual shift mode just slide the shifter all the way to the back it is going to display what gear you are currently in up on the digital gauges and those gauges are amazing i'll be showing those to you guys later in the video but it's saying i am currently in fifth gear so let me go ahead and find one more straightaway here let's put the paddle shifters to the test and uh, let's just see how quickly they are going to react for us here. Let's go to a standstill in first gear, go. Hmm. Not bad. I mean, I will say you can still 100% tell it's a CVT, so we're technically not shifting through any gears, but they're okay. It doesn't really feel like a conventional automatic, like you're really shifting through anything, and that's to be expected. But the one reason I always do like paddle shifters in SUVs is for a little bit of engine braking if it were to be snowing out. So if I'm going down a hill, let's say, and there's snow covering the roads, rather than actually hitting the brakes and risk sliding off the road, I can simply do a little bit of downshifting using the left paddle shifter there, and it's gonna let the engine do a little bit of the braking. So you're less inclined to actually slide off the road so it's going to help you out with that i suppose but 
Anyways, to go along with that, acceleration as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 13.8 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13 inch ventilated rear discs. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, that's going to come in at 115 feet. That is a sport sedan number, you guys. That is ridiculous. Usually with SUVs, you find the 120s, if not the 130s, I've seen as bad as 139 feet. So 115 feet, that is a sport sedan number. So having said that, let's just go ahead and hit the brakes real quick. It's insane. It instantly brings you to a stop. There is wonderful braking on the new Outlander without a doubt. So I love it for that. So rest assured, if you need to come to a quick stop, you more than likely are not gonna be hitting the person in front of you because this thing brings you to an immediate stop. And again, for comparison's sake, like 130 feet, you get an extra 15 feet of braking with this thing compared to most three row SUVs out there. So that is absolutely wonderful. But that touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get an independent strut type front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension. As far as ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. It's nothing like luxury like because it doesn't have the adaptive suspension like luxury cars do or anything like that, but it's been okay. It's pretty much as I expected. I personally wouldn't have any issues taking this thing on a long road trip. As far as steering feel goes, I love it. I think I said that before with the Outlander though. It's weighted on the heavier side of things, so it does instantly point you in the direction that you want to go. So it feels more like a sports sedan as opposed to your typical SUV where it's a loosey goosey feel. So love the steering feel on this thing. As far as cabin noise goes, we're going 28 miles per hour right now. So not the quickest, but it's been all right. It's pretty much as expected when it comes to cabin noise. Touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back, honestly. I don't have the third row up, so I'm not sure what those third row headrests are gonna be like, but right now with the third row folded down, I can see perfectly fine out my rear view mirror. Did want to also mention that there is a head up display that is optional for the SEL trim level only. That is gonna assist you with forward visibility, projecting your speed, speed limit, and safety features up onto your windshield. So that is gonna be there for you as well. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Mitsubishi Outlander. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Mitsubishi Outlander finished in mercury gray metallic. In case you were curious of our exact exterior color name that we had on this one. As always, let's go ahead and start with where the Outlander is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter J, indicating that the Outlander is built and assembled in Japan, a JDM SUV, gotta love it. But let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Of course, you got that Outlander lettering spelled out horizontally on the very front of the hood there. LED headlights do come standard on every single trim level across the board for added illumination at night. That still isn't always the case even in today's time. So a lot of SUVs will still give you halogens, but LEDs all the way around with LED daytime running lights. Of course, you get the automatic feature as well. So when it starts to get dark at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. But look down below there, you got LED fog lights for the SE trim level and up. So even more illumination. So they definitely look good in my personal opinion. You got the chrome accenting surrounding the headlight bezels as well. Got some aluminum trim accenting found on the very bottom portion of that front bumper. And if you get up close, just underneath of that Mitsubishi logo, you will find that adaptive cruise control sensor kind of built into the front grill as well. But I don't think anyone could deny this is a very good looking front end, but that pretty much rounds out the front end. So now go ahead and check out the side of this one. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the Outlander, silver roof rails will come standard on the SEL trim level like we have today. Silver belt line molding also coming standard we got the floating roof line towards the back there in the C pillar, kind of uh, differentiating the roof line from the rest of the body. That looks good. Then take a look at the A pillar. It is going to be finished in gloss black, regardless of trim level that you go with. It's always going to be a gloss black A pillar. So a little sportier of design in my personal opinion there. Rear privacy glass does come standard on this one. Taking a look at the side mirrors, you will find body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They are going to be heated for the SE trim level and up with LED integrated turn signals then as well. Then take a look down at the wheel setup. You're going to find 18 inch aluminum alloys for the ES. However, all other trim levels are going to give you 20 inch aluminum alloys, AKA the ones you are currently looking at right now. They are two toned as well. So definitely a very nice look to it. But again, that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, body colored shark fin antenna does come standard. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper, you got the SAWC back 
dodging found on the rear window i'm gonna get up a little bit closer here so i can show that to you guys that is uh the all-wheel control badging of course if you were to go with that configuration at least you will find some led tail lights coming standard on this one that definitely looks good as well for added illumination you will get the trim level badging back there and some aluminum trim accenting found on the lower portion of that rear bumper and then if you were to look up underneath of this thing you will find a single exhaust outlet tucked away kind of on the driver's side there so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the Outlander, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a power tailgate that does come standard. However, there is a hands-free power tailgate that comes with the SEL trim level that we have today. So I absolutely love that. There is a button, of course, on the tailgate itself and a button on the key fob then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in 11.7 cubic feet behind that third row. If that was not enough space, of course, the third row does fold down, bumping that up to 33.5 cubic feet. Then with all rows folded, 79.7 cubic feet. That's actually a decent amount and almost the exact amount as my 2017 Hyundai Santa Fe three row SUV. So it's probably why I like the size of this SUV that we're in today. But cargo lighting does come standard. There's a 12 volt power outlet back there. You got a cargo cover, plenty of grocery bag hooks. There's tie down anchors. And then if you were to lift up underneath that cargo floor, you'll actually find some in floor storage as well, perhaps for a tire inflator kit or an ice scraper or something like that. But then make your way up to the third row legroom that comes in at 28.7 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall not a whole lot of space for me back there quite honestly and little less space than my old ford mustang gt so maybe small children would be able to fit back there but certainly not adults but i will say they do have cup holders for the third row passenger so that was nice to see then make our way up to the second row legroom that is going to come in at 39.9 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall yet again this is how much space i have back there you will find some usb charging ports for the se trim level and up it's going to be a usb a and usb c tri zone climate control coming standard with the SEL trim level but you also get heated rear seats actually for that SEL that we have today as well so 100% love that rear window sunshades are going to be optional for the SEL we actually do have them with us today so I could show those two guys that were pretty cool as far as how many people the Outlander actually seats it is going to be seven so you got two up front two in the third row and then always three in the middle so there's no captain's chairs or anything like that in the middle it's always going to be the bench seat but anyways upper and lower seats seat bat map pockets as well that is something that always surprises me with the outlander because traditionally suvs will give you the lower seat bat map pockets but for the upper ones you can probably put your cell phone up there or a tablet or something like that so that was definitely pretty cool to see as well but then make your way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the es the se trim level is going to add to that leatherette surfaces and heated front seats then the sel is going to add power adjustable front seats and full leather seating that is quilted and i absolutely love it and you got memory settings for up to two different drivers as well but believe it or not seating was incredibly comfortable some of the more comfortable seats i've felt in quite a while so got the power lumbar adjustment as well so Mr. Bishy did an amazing job with the seats. I'm just saying, but then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wraps for the SE trim level and up. And that heated steering wheel is going to be optional for the SE L trim if you wanted to go that route. Then make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your uh, Mr. Bishy logo all the way to the top. Lock, unlock, and the button to pop the rear tailgate there. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start. Yes, for every single trim level across the board. I like that. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot in the brake and press that engine start button located just to the right of the gauges there and so speaking of when it comes to the gauges analog gauges are going to come with the es and se trim levels but there is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster that's actually going to come standard on the black edition sel and then optional for the se i remember last year these digital gauges only came on the sel but now they will also come on the black edition and it's an option for the se so that's probably the biggest change for 2024 honestly but i love these gauges the cool thing about them is if if you go into the settings and you go to change meter view it actually completely changes the look of these gauges up here to kind of like a, a rolly thingy on the left and the right so you got your tachometer then on the left a speedometer on your right and the gauges look like nothing else on the road right now that i have seen so 
I love these digital gauges. Of course, it can display all kinds of things up front, outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, radio information, and so on. So pretty much everything you could possibly want on those digital gauges, including the drive modes. And by the way, the drive mode illustrations are pretty darn cool as well. So with, like with gravel, you have an Outlander driving through gravel. You have an Outlander driving through snow for the snow mode and deep mud. And it's pretty cool kind of graphics there when you change the drive mode as well. So I was a huge fan of the gauges in this thing. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. You got a panoramic sunroof that's going to be optional for the SE and SEL. That's why we don't have it today. We didn't have that option, unfortunately. But overhead sunglass holder is going to come standard across the board. Auto dimming rear view mirror for the SEL trim level only. Wireless phone charger for the SE trim level and up. That's going to be found in front of the shifter there. Tri zoom climate control for the SEL trim level. So both driver, passenger, and rear passengers can all set their own temperatures there. But overall, quite honestly, Mitsubishi did an amazing job with the fit and finishes in this thing. So for example, that quilted leather that you find on the seats is also brought onto the doors as well. So I was a huge fan of that. There's a little bit kind of a hidden storage just underneath of the shifter, kind of by the driver's right knee there. I'm a big fan of that. You have an electromechanical parking brake. Even surrounding the shifter, you have this nice silver kind of texturized finished and gloss black finish. So I was a big fan of that they could have left that like basic black or gray plastic but they put some finishes to it unlike most other manufacturers even in this price range just behind that you have a couple cup holders and within the center armrest a eh, little bit of storage there so not too bad but overall actually interior quality kind of surprised me if I'm being honest Outlander did a wonderful job with the interior quality but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen so it is going to differ depending upon the trim level that you go with so eight inch color touchscreen display is going to come with the ES nine inch color touchscreen display is going to come with all other trim levels either way you get bluetooth and audio streaming either way you get android auto apple carplay as well factory navigation system is going to come with a nine inch screen only yes that comes standard that's pretty darn cool you can check out your fuel price information up there stock information weather information so i like seeing that as well and of course your radio information so when it comes to the sound system of the outlander there's one optional one and then the one that comes standard for all trim so the one that comes standard is a six speaker sound system so we're going to test that out in a second here but there is an optional 10 speaker bow sound system that's going to be optional by the way for the se and sel trims that was only optional for the sel last year but now you can also get it on the se this year so that's pretty cool but anyways having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one all right so when it comes to the sound system i remember this last year the bass was pretty darn good for a six speaker sound system that really surprised me so usually you won't find that kind of bass with just six speakers having said that the clarity is not as good as a lot of the other sound systems that i test now i will say i test a lot of high-end sound systems but clarity you can tell it's a six speaker sound system but the bass you almost can't bass was really good i will say that but anyways last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put the outlander in reverse you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. You guys can probably hear it beeping at me because there's some weeds behind us as well. But you will also get that bird's eye view or 360 degree monitor with the SE trim level and up. That's pretty cool, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start by saying IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. And yes, that is for all trim levels across the board. So that pretty much says it all right there. But front side side curtain airbags do come standard, driver's knee airbag as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, a forward collision mitigation system, blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, lane change assist, and reverse automatic braking then as well. Then, if you were to go with that SE trim level and up, you're going to find an adaptive cruise control system, lane keep assist, lane departure prevention, and traffic sign recognition then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Outlander, excellent styling. I still love the redesign that they did back a few years back there. Definitely looks good. Digital gauges are absolutely wonderful. They're so unique. Even with so many other manufacturers doing digital gauges right now, these still look like nothing else on the road besides maybe the Nissan Rogue, of course. You guys probably know why, but I love the digital gauges on this thing. So a big fan of that. You also get America's best warranty, like I said. So got a ton of peace of mind with that from the manufacturer but again you can also get a double powertrain warranty if you get it from younger Mitsubishi if you wanted to do that I think there's two things that are missing the only constructive criticism that I have in this thing is 
Uh, I'm missing the garage door opener or home link controls for up to three different garage doors where you can press the button and it's going to open up your garage door for you. So that's an easy fix. You could just get one of the ones that clip on your visor from Lowe's, but uh, they sometimes rattle at higher speeds and things like that. So wouldn't have minded seeing home link, but also multicolor ambient lighting, I think would look pretty darn good in the Outlander as well. Really taking the interior quality to the next level like uh, Hyundai and Kia and companies like that do as far as competition goes at least. So would have liked to have seen that as well. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the outlander in the comments section below i love reading your comments that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what i do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video Stay gold. So I